Hello, my friends. I'm extremely, extremely excited to bring you today's episode, which is going to be all about my top lessons that I've learned along my money journey, if you want to call it that. And a journey it has been. I'd say it's been the better part of a decade, uh, closing in on 10 years here in a few months, that I've been truly, truly committed to wealth and figuring it out and healing my stories and my lineage and my trauma and my relationship with the outside world, really. And so much of that trickles into wealth and money, and we don't realize that. So... I'm going to be getting raw, I'm going to be getting real, and I trust that you guys will appreciate that, and my intent with this podcast episode is I want you guys to be able to see yourself reflected back in my story, and if I can do that, I'll consider this a wild success. So the first thing I want to get into is some of my beliefs, some of my beliefs that I learned that I had in retrospect. And the funny thing about beliefs is that they're unconscious, yet they govern our life. We don't often realize what is going on that's guiding these behaviors of, you know, self-sabotage or things just never seem to work out or struggle or whatever it may be. And you know, when we finally find the culprit and we take his mask off, we find out that it's us. Just like the Scooby-Doo memes, for those of you who have seen those. So let's dive into a little bit of context, a little bit of my background and all of that. So early on, you know, 2021, I was introduced to a multi-level marketing company. And while that didn't pan out, and I'm not going to get into that, it was an incredible opportunity, incredible experience, changed my life. And what it did was it opened me up to an entire world of wealth and financial literacy and an alternative to the typical education and career systems. And that forever changed me. And so I started going down this path of reading personal development books and wanting to create wealth for myself and all of that. And I found myself wanting to be wealthy. I wanted to be free, and yet, at the same time, I had deep core beliefs that rich people were greedy, or immoral, or disliked, or whatever it may be for you, and this took so many years to unravel, and so that's kind of what I'm going to get into today in that there was a, a bit of a juxtaposition going on here, right? I, I greatly wanted wealth. I wanted to be free. I wanted to not have to worry about working for money or trading my time or being a slave to the rat race or whatever it may be. I wanted those things so badly. And yet, because of my upbringing, because of the society I grew up in, because of maybe personality tendencies, because of experiences I had been through, media, music, all the programming, etc. I had these beliefs that literally would not let me be wealthy. Because when you have beliefs that something is bad unconsciously, your subconscious mind is going to protect you at all costs from becoming or acquiring that thing because it sees it as a danger. It's, it's in conflict to what you actually believe, right? And to go a little bit deeper, this episode is going to be especially relevant for those of you who are on the spiritual path or have been. And the reason for that is because there's something especially uh, difficult for those of us who have walked or are walking the spiritual path. And 
what I have experienced in my journey is basically, you know, I have a background in being somewhat of a spiritual coach, spiritual mentor, whatever you want to call it. I helped people heal. I helped people deal with their trauma, heal their lineage, et cetera, et cetera, inner work, all the things. And because of my unique background with spirituality and wanting to be the best coach I could be, I learned everything there was to learn about spirituality. Eastern, Western, you name it, all of the things, right? All the cool rabbit holes. And this was incredible for me. But what it did on the money side of things was it actually led to me unconsciously developing some beliefs around money that did not serve me at all. And here are some examples of what I mean. So if my deepest core beliefs, which are unconscious, could actually talk, here's what they would have said. Here's a few of them that I ended up identifying later on. Number one, I am actually better than others who have or like money because I denounce the desire or need for material things. I'm going to say that again. I am actually better than others, so superior to others who have or like money because I've denounced that desire and I don't need material things. <laughs> Spiritual ego much? <laughs> uh, that's a funny one. If you know, you know. Another good one was I'm actually superior to others morally because I don't focus on acquiring tons of wealth. And those who do are just insecure. They're not there yet. <laughs> These are examples of the tricky, tricky stories that our ego can tell us. And we will actually deeply believe and rationalize. And they will seem to make sense. And the problem is, is that when we go on the spiritual journey, we're never not going to have an ego. And so the more, quote unquote, spiritual you become, the easier it becomes to develop what's called spiritual ego which is really just a clever form of bypassing where now you're more intellectual, you're more aware, you're more clever, and so is your ego. So the stories you come up with to rationalize and cope with your own dissatisfaction with yourself or life or whatever become that much more clever. And this has been my experience very much so. So I found beliefs like this underneath the surface, which were only apparent after enough years of examining my behaviors. So I do want to clarify something about unconscious and subconscious beliefs. So you have to examine behavior, you have to examine action of said person, and then you reverse engineer, you derive from that what their beliefs are. You can't just ask someone, what do you believe? They're going to tell you with an immense bias and, and ego their answer. That's not true. If you want to know anyone's deepest unconscious beliefs, just watch their behavior, right? So this is somewhat of what I do to myself through psychoanalysis or introspection or whatever you want to call it. And after enough years of watching my behavior, I noticed like, okay, I'm saying consciously, conscious mind, I'm saying I really want wealth. I'm saying I would do anything to be free. I will die before I'm broke, you know, before I go broke in a later age because I was already broke. <laughs> That's the joke. I was saying those things consciously, but unconsciously, I believed that I was actually a better person for not having that. I believed that I was actually morally superior to people who had a lot of wealth or who built a lot of wealth, or who were born into a lot of wealth. And so these beliefs, quite li literally, were at opposite ends of the spectrum, and they would not allow me to actualize what I consciously wanted, because what I unconsciously believed was the complete opposite. And this is a case for so many of those around me that I see. We're all human. We're all subject to very similar limitations. And so that's why I'm sharing these things openly. I have a hunch you guys will be able to resonate. So here's another one. And this one's even funnier. If my belief could have talked, this is what it would have said. I don't actually need to put in consistent, focused effort 
to acquire wealth. It will just come to me as it's meant to. And those who sacrifice and really focus on building wealth just don't understand how the universe works. <laughs> Let's, you know, it's okay, guys. You can laugh at me. So that's a funny one. And yet again, we have spiritual ego cloaking itself as, you know, I'm either morally superior or I don't need those things. I don't actually care about those things. But deep down, we do. And I did. And we know that somewhere in there. But we're experts at rationalizing, repressing, and suppressing things. So it may not be clear. It may be a little fuzzy. But it's in there. And it took me about six years of spiritually bypassing in these ways to realize that all of these were just rationalizations that I created in my head to cope with the fact that I was addicted to struggle. I was broke as fuck relative to what I envisioned for myself at least. And my beliefs weren't actually creating the results that I desired in life. So how do you know if, you know, you need to change your beliefs? Well, I always usually tell people, just zoom out, look at your life right now, look at the results in your life of all the areas that you care about, you know, financially, emotionally, your relationships, your health, your wealth. Look at all the areas. Are you happy with the results, with the fruit that has bared in your life right now? If not, there's some beliefs there that could use some tending to. It's the easiest way to think about it. And as I look around the spiritual community today, I see these same unconscious core beliefs ruling so many of my brothers and sisters, whether that's spiritual coaches, whether that's healers, whether that's people who are just on the path of waking up or people who have been awake for many, 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 many years, there's this, I almost view it like propaganda because as humans, we're so subject to groupthink that we can have the best of intentions. Like morally, it feels like it's really easy for it to feel like, yeah, like not putting so much importance into money, that's a good thing, right? And that's that was where my intentions came from. It was like, I'm trying to be the best person I can be. I've seen what money can do. And I don't, I just don't need all that. That was the good intention, but there's a shadow side to all light, right? And so the light was that, but the shadow side is like, but I actually do want these things. And I'm really struggling because I'm holding on to these beliefs about thinking I'm better than others because I don't have all this money. And, and the reason I'm convinced myself I don't have all this money is because I've decided, oh, I don't need all this money. But in reality, if I wasn't fucking lying to myself, the reason I don't have all that money is just because I didn't deserve it. I didn't know how to provide value to the marketplace. I didn't have financial literacy. I didn't sacrifice. I, I wasn't who I needed to be in order to attract that into my life, right? And that's the action piece. And so what I've noticed is that it has become trendy, literally trendy, to denounce anything in the 3D material world, whether it be, you know, status or cars or just caring about money or whatever it may be. It's become trendy to do that and to live completely detached from anything related to money or material status. And that's something I did for years. It was like, yeah, I'm living way below, you know, median uh, median income. And when I do make money, when I did start making money, it was like, I'm just saving it and it's not, you know, it's not a big deal and I have more than enough. I'm grateful, I'm thankful. And all those things are true and those are foundational things. Those are foundational pillars of a fulfilled life. If you're not fulfilled now with not a lot, 
you're never going to be fulfilled with a lot. So yes, that does start first. But I think this, these stories in the, in the spiritual community, they've been taken out of context. They've been, they've gotten out of hand. And I know for me, as soon as I heard, you know, those types of stories about like, you know, someone going off into Tibet, quitting their job, going to Tibet and just meditating all day and just denouncing the world. And like, they don't need money and they just reach whatever actualization is, right? Whatever that meant in my imagination. Those stories did something to me. And I began unconsciously trying to live that way, yet still being plugged into a society that requires material means to survive and requires money to not fucking struggle. And so there was this immense conflict in my head of like, spiritually, I thought I had to be this thing. And I was in resistance. It was like, it was like half of me was fighting the other half. And, and it was years of like, just making, you know, progress was made, but it was very messy. And it was, it was filled with resistance because I would take two steps forward. And then there would be like me feeling shame and guilt or feeling like, oh, I have enough now and being comfortable or whatever it may be. And what I have found in my nine-ish year journey of focusing on healing my relationship with both money and wealth and the stories that I tell myself around these topics is that these were all just forms of very clever spiritual bypassing. And if you don't know what that means, you can go look it up and then maybe give this a re-listen. These were all just forms of spiritual bypassing that we engage in, in the woke community or the spiritual community or the conscious community, whatever you, you know, whatever you want to say. And what happens is our egos cling to this notion that we are somehow superior because we aren't materialistic. But what happens is that becomes gasoline for the ego's fire and it unknowingly activates strengthens and reinforces our ego our sense of identity the illusion of who we think we are now we're entitled and now we're better than others and now there's separation now there's division so how is that any better right and for me it took so many years to to realize this because Everything is so uh, nuanced and it's hard to see the picture when you're in the frame, right? So really what I want to say to you guys is that eventually we do and will have to come down from the pedestal of bypassing. And we will have to come home to the reality that we were born into this human experience to live as a human. We are not living as God yet, at least. And that's something that, if you're anything like me, is so easy to miss. It's very easy to get wrapped up in trying to do all the things to get into your your higher self and your higher chakras and ascend and enlightenment and all the things. But man, the biggest lesson for me since I'll say the last year and a half has been realizing I'm going to fucking be here for a while and trying to go up all the time, trying to stay up there, whatever that means was just my own form of coping. And it wasn't really any different than a drug addict or when I used alcohol all the time for that or weed or insert any addiction or coping mechanism that we have, right? We're meant to learn the lessons that a human experience uniquely provides. We're meant to learn that. And if we're always trying to go up or trying to be this unrealistic 
image of perfection in a in terms of values and morals we're missing the fact that our creator is having fun with this when he created us there's a reason we have so many flaws and it's impossible to ever be perfect and we have so many limitations the nature of being human is limitation and is being flawed and that's the point and so it took me so long to work through those weird shame guilt dynamics around money which is like kind of surprising to people at first like why would you be shameful about having a lot of money? But actually, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. Is it's it's the virtue signaling. It's it's the moral aspect of things. Of oh, there's this notion of it's more respectable to denounce money than it is to commit to and stand for wealth. It is. Think about it societally. Rich people, the 1% and all that. Look how much shade Elon Musk gets, Jeff Bezos gets. It's always the rich people. They need to pay more taxes, blah, blah, blah. They're part of the Illuminati. There's so much there. And as a spiritual entrepreneur, as a spiritual investor, which I am both, I've had to really let all of that go both what the media and the mainstream says and what the spiritual community and the woke folk <laughs> say and really come into my own. What do I believe? What do I believe? And what is what are more empowering versions of these stories that I can tell myself and that I can agree to that actually align with me in a value sense, in a soul sense, and in a sense of where I'm trying to go with all of this. So if I could go back and I could talk to 20-year-old Jeremy, who has just learned about the law of attraction, the secret, the power of the subconscious mind, all the good things, right? This is what I would tell him. And I hope this resonates for some of you who may be, you know, where I was. Your journey is going to take a lot longer than it needs to if you get caught up on clinging to false moral superiority. We are all equal, <laughs> regardless of what you choose to spend your life focusing on. And that's another thing where it took me so long to realize that. Like I, I would do things and genuinely think that I was better a better human because I was choosing to focus on X, whereas other people were focusing on Y. And that's just coping. That's completely a subjective belief based on your own moral and value-based lens. And that's fine. You can believe that. But for me, I found that those beliefs were keeping me stuck. So I had to go into the garden, figure out the weeds, see where they were at, and pull them because they were not empowering me. So if you desire to live a truly wealthy life, don't spend years and years pretending that you don't want that. I know that sounds silly, and for some of you, this may not apply. Like, maybe money is everything to you, and that's good for you. Maybe. But for, for me and for a number of you who I know are going to listen to this, and the reason I know this is because I run a 100-person, 100-plus person conscious wealth mastermind, and I see it so much. It's really, it's a really, really fine line between being a really good person who really cares about humanity and has a pure soul and buying into programming that seems like it aligns with just being a really good person, but actually it's almost like a little psyop programming that is meant to keep you stuck and that it will. 
So if you know right now as you're listening to this, if you know that you intend to be wealthy, that that's a priority to you, you're going to need to first just start owning that, talking about it, telling people, working on being able to get to a point where you can talk about that, say that, proclaim that, and own that with no shame. There should be no shame around that. And if you can't say those types of things to, for example, your friends without shame, red flag, right? Why are your friends shaming you? Why is your family shaming you for wanting more access to resources to be able to make a larger difference in the world? Why, right? And if you're anything like mine, your family will shame you. And your friends will shame you. (laughs) But that's their shit. That doesn't have anything to do with you. Right? Just because those around you programmed you into believing that there's something wrong with wanting what you want. Or, my favorite one, that it somehow makes you less spiritual to be wealthy. It somehow makes you a higher evolved person, a more ascended being, if you're fucking broke. (laughs) Like, that's really a thing. That's really a thing. And I was so stuck on that. Like, I was, I thought the best thing you could be in life is just this insanely, unrealistically high vibrating being that never comes down. And therefore, you don't need money. And people who focus on that are just, they don't get it. And look, maybe that's your truth. That's fine. But I'm just sharing my experiences and and a little bit about my story. And I have a hunch you guys will resonate if you're listening to this podcast. It does not make you any less spiritual. And I want to remind you that you create the rules and the limitations in your own life. No one else does that. No one but you. Yes, we were programmed. Yes, the way you were raised heavily affects you. Yes, your DNA and things in your tissues are still affecting you. Yes, media and all those things. They all play a role in programming us. But at the end of the day, you create the rules. And if you want different outcomes, you're going to have to rewrite the script. And I want to remind you of a few things. (laughs) First off, You don't get a trophy for being more broke than your neighbor. You don't get a trophy. (laughs) And you do not get brownie points for struggling unnecessarily in the name of being more ascended or higher vibration or more evolved. Please. Let's stop propagating this nonsense. And honestly, I think it is good intention because I can fully understand how it is. But what's unfortunate about it as a byproduct is that these notions about only caring about your vibration or your state or becoming, you know, so light that you're not even a dense being anymore and you're just completely up here all the time. That's just bypassing. And the people who fall victim to that are unfortunately people with extremely strong moral compasses, people with extremely deep senses of values and compassion, people who genuinely want the best for the human race, like myself. And those are the people. It's not the assholes. It's not the narcissists. It's not the manipulative people. It's not the power-hungry and secure people. It's us. So if this is resonating with you, I want to encourage you to consider a few things. First, if we truly want to change this world that we're living in for the better, we need money. And lots of it. That's just, 
being realistic. Money affords us resources. It affords us influence, which people overlook greatly. Influence is extremely powerful. And it affords us opportunities that we just could not access with limited material means. There's just tables you can't sit at. There's conversations you're not included in. There's votes you don't get to participate in. But with enough money, yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. You're sitting at the table with enough money. You have equity. You have ownership. Your phone rings before a decision's made. And that's very much so in line with where I'm at these days and how I move and what I'm building. So to wrap it up, guys... I would like to encourage each and every one of you listening to gift yourself some space and time to sit with this message. Go inwards and examine if any of these beliefs that I personally struggled with for years but wasn't consciously aware of were actually holding me back are present in your current reality. Because... I have a hunch they are. And if you can really go in there, be honest with yourself, give yourself compassion and grace, there's no need for shame or guilt. That is the seed of change. Once we're aware, then we can work on adopting more empowering beliefs and starting to own who we are and how we want to show up and what what is a priority to us, regardless of whether others want to guilt or shame us or whatever, that has to do with their own relationship to money. That has to do with their own shit. And poor people are always going to shame rich people because that's how you cope, quite literally. And I know it because I was one. (laughs) That's how that shit works. It helps you. It helps you not feel so bad about yourself to be like, oh, the 1% despicable. I I wouldn't want that if I... If it landed on my doorstep, okay, all right. (laughs) And we can genuinely try to rationalize these things, right? But what I want to end on is reminding each and every one of you that until we can adopt powerful and empowering core beliefs around what it means to have and acquire wealth, as well as what it means to be a wealthy person, right? And our relationship to each of those notions, that reality just isn't going to happen for us. And unfortunately, so many of my brothers and sisters who are the kindest, most amazing souls, you know, in the conscious space and in the community that I run and just friends and so on. So many are looking for solutions, looking for answers, trying to turn their financial situations around after an incredibly tough 2020 and an incredibly chaotic uh, last few years in terms of the world and the economy. And yet, they're kind of going nowhere fast. And the reason for that, whether or not we may realize it is because of our unconscious, deep, deep deep-rooted core beliefs around money. And until you can reframe what you think it means to be wealthy, what you think of wealthy people, what you think of money, what you think of people who focus on acquiring money, These types of things until you can truly not just go, oh, I reframed it. I don't believe that anymore. No, no, no. But like deeply mean it like to the point where you're, you know, coming on a podcast to rant at people about how you actually bought into this shit too, you know, and and being able to have forthright conversations and put that out there and just own it and not have any shame or guilt or anything like that come up until you can get to that point. Wealth is likely going to be polarized by you, meaning money tends to flow to those who 
know what to do with it and to those who like it, to those who can multiply it and to those who are comfortable with it. And I had to go from a place of feeling like money was this foreign concept that one day it's going to come, I swear. One day it's going to come and this will all be worth it. That was before. And now it's a thing of I print money. Money's constantly flowing to me. People throw their money at me because of the skills that I've developed and because of my relationship with money and because of the journey that I've walked and all these things. And I say that incredibly humbly. I'm just using that as an example to kind of paint like where I started and where I am now to show you guys like this is extremely possible, but it starts before the education, before the information, before the strategies, before you try to jump into crypto, before you try to master the stock market or whatever your vehicles may be. It starts with what you believe, what you believe about money and the world wealthy people, and what you believe would be true about you if you had wealth, if you were wealthy. So I'm going to wrap things up here. I hope this was an extremely eye-opening and hopefully reflective episode for you guys. Nothing informational today. Just wanted to let you in on a little bit of my journey. And if this resonated with you, I would really, really, really appreciate uh, you know you screenshotting this or if you're watching on, um, you know, I don't know where you guys are going to be watching this. So I'll just say you guys screenshotting this and reposting it and tag me at official underscore J Griff on Instagram. And I'll repost you guys. And I would also love you guys' feedback as well. Um, I'm, you know, I do not intend to monetize this podcast. I'm really just putting these out for you guys as yet another uh, totally free stream of education and value and just trying to help and reach more people. So if you guys find these episodes valuable, the best thing that you can do to support me, I don't want your money. I'm good. I I really don't need anything. The best thing that you could do is just support the growth of this podcast, which is going to be by leaving a positive review, which would be super helpful as well as, you know, just like screenshotting this and sharing it on your social media or send this episode to a friend who you think would really resonate with it. Having said that, I wish each of you an amazing day. Thank you so much for your time. If you're still here, I really appreciate you. And we will see you next episode, my friend.